Ooh, welcome back to Music Monday, my friends. Today is Monday, February 14th, which means it's also Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day. Um, I know, all the candy hearts, all the red, all the pink and the flowers and dinner's out. And if you're doing that, I hope you made reservations. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I wanted to focus today not on all the pink hearts and St. Valentine and, and all that jazz, but that we are celebrating love. And some of us have relationships that are beautiful examples for the world of what a loving couple relationship looks like. Some of us love our children in ways that are just beautiful and cause people to stop and wonder how it is that you and your children have this relationship that is so beautiful. And really though, the love relationship that I want to focus on, um, of course, being the uh, church musician, is of course um, our love of God and Jesus' love for us and God's love for us. The, the piece that I want to share with you today, um, it's a, an arrangement of a hymn, Jesus, Lover of My Soul. For those of you that have a United Methodist hymnal at home, you go look it up. It's number 479 in your hymnal. Um, and those of you who know me very, very well will not be surprised that on this St. Valentine's Day, I'm playing a piece that's in minor. Yes, because me. Um, and it's the arrangement I have is mixed with a foray piece. Um, Pavan, which is a beautiful, moody, lovey piece. It's uh, a very emotional piece. Um, but I wanted to focus on the love of Christ for us and our command from him to go forth and love one another. One of the things I, I do want to share with you, and I'm not going to read the text of the hymn, but uh, this scripture has been turning in my head as we uh, have gotten closer and closer to Valentine's Day. So I am, if you wanna grab your Bible or your Bible app or whatever, um, I'm in the book of 1 John chapter four, and I'm gonna start in verse seven, and I'm gonna read through verse 12, and then I'm gonna skip down to verse 18. I'll warn you when I skip, okay? And I am reading from our Pew Bible, which I think it's a revised. Which version is this? It's a revised standard version. <laughs> so this is not quite the uh, the verbiage that you might be used to hearing from me, but this is what I had on hand um, when this occurred to me. So, so uh, starting at verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And he who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No man has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us skipping down to 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and he who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God should love his brother also. Friends, that can be tough. When you really get digging in there, that can be a tough one to handle. There are people in our lives that are frankly not very lovable. I call them our, our prickly pears. <laughs> You know, they challenge us, they push us. Some of them are people that are close to us. Some of them are people that are just kind of out there in the world. Yay, social media. You know, we see people online and there are people that you just like to go and you like poke the bear and see if you can get a reaction out of them. That's not loving. That's not loving. How can we be loving towards them? Sometimes the most loving thing we can do is to just give them their space to just be on their own. 
you know, your mom said uh, when you were little, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Yeah, that. <laughs> so friends, uh, you know, in whatever version you happen to have at home, go ahead and, and read through that again and really think through not just how am I loving my family? How am I loving my, my sweetheart today on Valentine's Day? But how am I loving my, my brothers and my sisters around me? How am I loving the people at work? How am I loving uh, the grumpy guy that's behind me uh, in the grocery store line? It's just back there grumbling because it's taking too long. How am I loving the people that I don't see eye to eye with um, ideologically or politically or I don't know. I, there's so much right now. <laughs> really, there is. There's so much. So how am I, how am I sharing the love of God with those people? It doesn't always have to be, you know, beat somebody over the head with a Bible. It's not a baseball bat. It's about how we are living and how we are letting God's love show through how we treat them, how we speak to them, and how we act around them. So today, as we focus on love and all the love things, and yes, I'm wearing my, my, my pretty little red and all the things. I have a show today at Westminster, so those of you that are there, I'll see you soon. Uh, yeah, think about the one who loves you more than anyone else on this planet ever could. I love you.